Greetings to you, beloved divine creator. I am Solaris of Achenaic creation and I love you. Oh, how I love you. Hmm. Can you feel it? Can you feel the love and the joy and the freedom of those pouring into this room right now, pouring out of your heart and into this world that is your creation, that is your reflection, and that indeed is your playground. You don't often think of it as such. Most of the time, you walk through these lands with its valleys and its hills, its ups and its downs, without even thinking about it, or should I say, by thinking too much about it. But, but beloveds, I do not need to tell you that you have never left your place of origin, your place of home, and that all that appears to surround you now is merely playing out in that same environment. No different than in your cultures, in your houses, when you have children who like to play, who like to imagine and invent all sorts of scenarios, you have a playroom in your house. And think of this environment as that room. I want you once again to become aware of all those that are pouring into this room right now and into all the rooms that you appear to sit in as you connect to this message. There are those joining whom you have met in this lifetime and lost or moved on from. There are many more joining whom you have never met in this lifetime. Loved ones, guiding ones such as myself, teachers to whom you are eternally and always connected, standing behind you right now and touching your shoulders and in some cases the back of your heart space. Allow yourself, beloved creator, allow yourself to feel this because it is essentially a feeling that is more true and more present than anything else that you could find around you. Hmm. 
I also want you to become aware, especially those in this room right now, of all those beings, both within the field of time and space and beyond it, that are bilocating, essentially, into this space to join this moment. And you can say, Solaris, how long is this going to go on for? <laughs> are you going to be listing arrivals for the rest of this session or are we going to get somewhere? Well, beloved, the truth is that I, if you can imagine it, am sitting here quite stunned. I knew that it would happen, that you would move through these densities and ultimately find yourself in the grand opening that you have now moved through to find yourself in this world of infinometry, of indeed the great simplifier. And on this other side of this portal, into the Aquarian age. Now I myself today will not share much about this arrival of the Aquarian age itself. That will be left for the next speakers in sequence that will follow me, the seven infinities of the Pleiades to begin with. And then after 35 years of silence or more, the beloved Ra. A moment to which we all greatly look forward indeed. But what I will speak of is the continuation of a tuition that I started in the introductory chapter of this Creator Manifest. It is for that reason that I will call this transmission the heart of portal travel. For those of you who have not had the opportunity to embrace my previous message, I invite you to do so either right now or at a time very soon after listening to this piece. That piece was called the art of portal travel and today we will go into the heart of it but before we do and yes i will explain this to you in such a practical way that you can immediately begin practicing it after this message but before we go into portal travel I have some things to say based on the recent communications that have been sent in after this chapter on infinometry began. And even though there will be specific moments of in-depth Q&A sessions with the beings that have presented you with the material that has recently come, I today wish to address the more subtle side and the emotional side even of the questions and the commentary that has been sent to us. Many of you as the mind would have it, 
after the seven sessions or eight now that have been recently presented to you are on the lookout to get more technical information have been asking to look into the earlier work and where specifically one could find deepening information on the permanent states of sun, for instance, on the tachyonic fields, for instance, and all of these things that have passed recently. And while, of course, it has been shared with you that these permanent states themselves will soon communicate with you directly to tell you more about their nature and about their permanence, to name but a couple of topics. I refer to what I recently said at the start of this communication. You are now in the time of the great simplifier. The complexity of creation in the form of geometries, in the form of all the technical information in the world, that time, beloved, is behind you. While it is so that so-called technical information, theory, and deep metaphysical and multidimensional concepts can be described and can be and will be delivered to you in the times to come. I want you to think about what you are actually looking for in the desire to deepen the knowledge that has now already been shared so far. Because we are speaking about states that are inherent to you. The state of love, the state of joy and the state of freedom. These are not things that need to be complicated. These are not things that need to be researched and investigated. Not things that need to be mastered. The illusions, those things created by the mind, yes, that does require a certain mastery in the letting go of it. But this, the simplicity of the permanent states and the immutable elements, a creative act born from these states, There is nothing else to say. There is only to explore and to feel. And when you do, the real question to ask yourself in every moment, also for what will come later in this session, is, is what I am feeling actually real. It is the most important question that you can ask yourselves right now and I'll explain why. You have been told about the field of Savok or the mind and the ego and the personality and the field of Sankara. Let's simplify and say the heart space. Finite creations, infinite creation, 
on the one side and on the other side. Hmm? But then I want you to think about that for a minute. And let's go and turn this into an example to make it easier to understand. Imagine yourself waking up in the morning, in bed. Imagine in this scenario, there is nothing calling you in that day, no labor to go to, no appointments to keep, nothing. And yet, you wake up and you feel miserable. Everything is wrong for some reason. This could be mental, this could be physical, this could be mental and physical. What a joy. It could be the weather. It could be everything and nothing. And there you are, adrift in this emotional, mental thunderstorm that you call the mind, wondering what is wrong with you? What is wrong with the world? What is wrong? Well, what is wrong is the operating system that you are playing with in that moment. And that is why I say to you, is what you are feeling real? When in previous messages, others spoke about a time of great abandonment. And that is what this question refers to. And the abandonment is in the courage to distinguish between that which is permanent and that which is finite as a state of experience. It has been shared with you that all these finite things that the mind can generate are finite because they are unique. They have a beginning, a middle and an end. And they are not unique because they aren't being experienced and expressed similarly through other people. But they are unique because these others around you, when they experience the same types of mental anguish, pain, what have you, and you have one thing in common. You are creators. Now, the mind, ego, personality system, the system otherwise known as Savok, is not a creator. I believe it was the Pai Kara son who recently shared with you that the field of Sankara is creative, whereas the field of Savok, of the mind, is imaginative. It, in itself, cannot create reality. Nothing can create reality except for the states of Sankara, as recently explained to you. That means that the mind is nothing else, as has been shared before, as a, than a script writer. It needs to provide these scripts to the producer and the actor 
of this little play and that happens to be you. All the mind can do, all Savok can do, is offer you scripts, stories, ideas, filters, opinions, judgments, thoughts, emotional states, and that sort of thing. But that in itself is not creating anything. It is not creating reality. What is creating reality is you. Through the system that has been explained, you. So what does Savok need to create anything? You. Now, you may say, well, that is obvious, Solaris. And I will agree with that. Let it be reflected evermore in your behavior and your approach and your attitude towards Savo. Going back to the person waking up in their bed, feeling all cranky, feeling that everything is wrong, being offered this script. Well, there is only one opportunity in that moment and one that will arise again and again and again with each passing moment to step out of that and that is to address the simplicity which is obvious, I'm sorry to say that that feeling, that experience of crankiness and horribleness is not going to change by waiting on an external stimuli, on external changes. It is only going to change by progressing through the experience that you have invoked by running the Savok script, by producing it, by putting it on stage, as it were. It is only going to change by moving out of that, by accepting that that is what happened, and by questioning for yourself, are these things real? And when you say, are they real, what you are really saying, what you are really asking, is are they permanent? Because if you are walking through a finite experience, one that is an emotional state, for instance, or a mental thought that is just running around and around, by default, that finite experience is going to have to come to an end. Everyone here knows that everything born from the mind or written by the mind comes to an end. It literally wears itself out. It can be rage and anger, it can be sadness, it can be happiness. It can be orgasmic sensations. All of these things, finite as they are, will run themselves off the rails and into oblivion, into their own ending. So if that is the truth, then the progression of experience that you permutate outside of time and space 
allows you to bring that expressed Savok experience to a close within seconds. If you know it is finite, you abandon it. You let it be. You walk away from it. You act like the streaming services of this day and age and you cancel the shit out of everything. Basically. After only one season. That is what you do. You can either only be in that state or in that state, can you not? That state that is finite on top of needing you to run the script and to turn it into an experience, on top of that, the truth is that Savok, as it affects you, isn't even interested in you. It will abandon you like a used object you will be thrown aside as soon as it manages to spread and copy itself into your surrounding environment and into those that are experiencing that surrounding environment with you because that is what it's after its multiplication as the parasite that it is, can only occur when others around it accept the state of Savok as reality too, because they may have been worn down by the energy that you are expressing. And at that point, as soon as the domino blocks around you begin to fall, you magically will begin to feel better. And you will wonder what all the fuss is about. Why is everyone so grumpy? Well, they are grumpy because you invited them to be and the finite states reaches its conclusion as quickly as it has infected others. So, from that perspective, choosing that state of Savok is absolutely illogical and schizophrenic to name but a few. But understanding it and understanding its invitation allows you to return to the home state, the state of Sankara, and allows you to abandon these finite states for what they are, and to open up to the simplicity of the flow of the river of that which is permanent that which is eternal it is for this reason this switch now being instantly possible that this is the time of great abandonment if you understand with everything that you are that this state of creation of mind needs you in order to manifest it, then all it takes is for you to take responsibility for your creation and to write your own script with the language and the song that we have brought back to you.
we hope that that to some extent helps those that feel they need to dig deeper into technical information in order to get to a state of grasping what we are here talking about together. And it leads us to the discussion of this moment. Previously, when I introduced the concept of portal travel to you, and I stated back then as well, that this concept goes for the idea of bilocation and all of these things that you have heard about in previous times. I explained that from the perspective of mathematics many years ago, the idea of infinity the idea of God was attempted to be understood by describing a circle with a center and a circumference. The circles that you know about have a finite circumference and have a zero point for a circle. But in the 17 and 1800s and the early 1900s, mathematicians and metaphysicians explored the concept of that which would be on the other side. The concept of God, the concept of infinity and divinity. And many decades before ever, understanding anything about the existence of black holes and such, they described the perfect formula of it in their attempt to understand infinity. What they did is they tried to imagine, and this is of course a problem for the mind, to imagine a circle of which the center point, the zero point, would begin to grow, in a way becoming a circle in itself, while the circumference of the circle would begin to shrink. And at some point, they meet. The zero point in the center having become big enough to touch the circumference of the original circle itself, lift each other out of existence. And what you are left with, as the mathematics goes, is a circle of which the center point is infinite and of which the circumference is zero. So in other words, if that circle and the environment inside of the circle would be this training reality that you are in, then the collapsing of the reality occurs by the expansion of the center field, which is, in this case, the creator self, or within the chakra system and the body, the akene, the heart center. And when I address this theory, 
I say to you, for once, they were right on the money. Not only is that the perfect description of what actually occurs within a black hole, and you now know that everything at the heart is one, but it is also the perfect description of reaching infinity through a finite space. Of course, in order to do so, the abandonment of the finite is required. And that is the stage that you have now reached. A plateau that you can remain on, of course, as long as you are comfortable to. But in order to continue the climb, the rise, to continue the way home, if you will, this abandonment I speak of, of the finite states, will be required. And that does not happen through technical information that does not happen by studying the states of Sankara. That does not happen by attempting to draw schematics and memorize for yourself. Oh yes, Da is here and Ba is here. And to have your little notebook with translations. Ah oh, yes, Da is love and this is this. No, that is all mind games. You already are a master at this. And the reality that you have manifested so magnificently around you is proof of it. So good are you that you have appeared to have gotten yourself stuck in here with no memory really of what came before, what is out there. So, use that mastery now. It was said the other day that what this really comes down to for this person that is lying in that bed all grumpy thinking that everything is wrong with everything that what the shift from Savok to Sankara really comes down to is the choice the active choice to want to be a light onto the world and I do not say that lightly pardon the pun Because it is that desire that is the shift from the concept that you consider free will to the true type of expression of will which we like to call pure will. Free will is something that you have gotten so accustomed to, uh, you throw it around left and right in, in the spiritual world, but also in the world of, of politics. You speak of freedom of speech and this and this and this. All sorts of freedom. And free will, to many, even through a religious perspective, means that you have the choice to get closer to the truth or further away from the truth, closer to God or further away from God, which is of course bullshit, because such a thing is not possible. You cannot get closer or further away from what you already are. But the free will concept that reigns supreme in the world of mind and in the world of Savok 
and in this holographic training ground you call a reality is only free because you get the choice to run the scripts that I have been speaking of earlier or not. The free will is the embrace of Savok. It is the choice to descend into finite creations to explore them and to see what they are all about. But free will to those that are ready to move on becomes quite a complicated thing. You see free will play out in the scenarios in the world around you. We don't need to go back into the things that the Paikara son spoke of recently. But all of that is free will. Pure will. That is the sense of passion and the drive that comes to those that have been beaten up and beaten down over and over and over again, that have ridden the storms, that have been engulfed by the waves and found their way back to the surface over and over again, then there comes a point When you find it unacceptable to continue living like that, to continue choosing to wake up like that in the morning or to go through your day like that, as I described earlier, and to find that good enough. What is happening in those moments is that somewhere deep within you the waters begin to stir every time you choose this supposed free will. Because deep down, and maybe I should say high up, you of course know that going into these emotional states, that creating from finite perspectives, that choosing all of these things that Savok writes about and offers you is foolish. You know this. You know that it won't take you anywhere. You have not been listening to us and working with this material for in some cases 10 or 20 years or more or much longer in some cases to not know that. But eventually something snaps and when it does that's the awakening or the return to pure will. Pure will does not give you a choice. Pure will does not speak of left or right or up or down, or light or dark. It is by all defaults and all meanings of the word pure. It is divine. It is infinite. It is the will of the Creator. And it burns in each and every one of you. It is essentially all you need to switch off and move out of the Savok system and to leave the mind for what it is and to move into the state of Sankara. 
Does it require guts? Yes. Because it is a jump into the unknown. What does it even mean? To leave the finite states behind. It doesn't mean, obviously, that you end up hanging in some sort of black void. Arriving in the age of Aquarius, moving through the final portal, reaching the state of the Lin point and infinometry, none of these things have meant that all of a sudden, automatically and by default, everything changes. If you are on a Windows computer and you buy another type of computer and you put it in your house but you don't turn it on or even when you do if you keep using the old one well then you're going to be creating the old system therefore the pure will is required and what it allows you to achieve to move out of this state and into the state of Sankara and to begin to guide yourself through that state is this idea of portal travel that was introduced. And I personally do not like the concept at all because when you think of portals and bilocation and teleportation and all of these things you you think of things outside of you but you don't think of the fact that you are that energy that each and every one of your particles, everything that makes you, you, and if you take all of that together as one whole, as just one big particle, then even that is at its heart, this portal. So, working with portal travel is working with yourself. Portal traveling from the perspective of Sankara is simply normal movement. Normal expression and progression of experience. But again, we come back to that one sentence. Is what you are feeling real? Why is that sentence so important, even when it comes to portal travel? Well, if it is indeed so, and I can verify that it is, that you are generating reality around you, using these different states of love and joy and freedom and truth and life and gratitude and grace and well-being, and the states that you are generating within yourself, as the final four in that sequence, if that is indeed so, then it is also so that every single experience that you have ever had, every single location at every given moment in time that you have ever visited, every moment in the past that you have ever witnessed, everything, that all of these moments and experiences and locations, you could say each were a slightly different expression of your song of love, joy, freedom and the other permanent states of Sankara. To simplify by an example, you're sitting in this moment right now. We are talking, we are experiencing this moment. That means that 
the state of love and the state of joy and the state of freedom and the state of truth and all of these different permanent states are balanced in a slightly exact way which is unique to each and every moment in time, each and every space in time, each and every experience in time, never repeats itself twice, unique and therefore from the field of Sankara they form and their, their exact expressions in that moment form the coordinates, if you will, of the experience and the moment and the space and the time that you are in. Some of you love your sci-fi concepts and some of you probably if I look into your popular culture, well, it's almost a bit old-fashioned now, but used to love to watch these movies and series called Stargate. Written by people who thought that portals were something outside of you. <laughs> and of course, do not forget that for the days of the service to self-based societies, such as Atlantis, portals were a technological thing that was outside of them. It is true, of course, that you can generate a wormhole or that sort of thing technologically. Rip a hole in everything like a fool and travel through it. But the concept of Stargate I bring up because if you remember in order to activate this, this round, sort of portal-like stargate, there were glyphs around the stargate. And there was a control panel that had to be clicked, a sort of dial-up system, if you will. And with each unique configuration of the glyphs when pressed, the system would start dialing hmm, until it locked into place and at that point you would see some sort of watery substance come out of this stargate and go back in. You would have a, the surface of a pond that you could then travel through. That's the, the sci-fi concept. But and it is often so, of course, these things often refer to the truth, but slightly inverted. Because the truth is that working with your Sankara field is not very different. To travel to any moment in time and space, if you think about it, there's only three things that are possible. You can move yourself from one location of space to another location of space in the same time. Hmm? You could move yourself from a location of space to that same space but in another moment in time or to another space in another moment in time. Or thinking of the concept of alternative realities and multiverses within the same space and time, you can move yourself up and down those vibrational states. You can move yourself from the space that you are in right now to a space that's in a deeper vibrational setting where, for instance, your corona lockdowns never ended and where indeed now you are in a fully blown police state. That is possible. You could also raise yourself to a state where those things never happened and where, for instance, the concept of war is simply not a thing. All of this ultimately comes down under the same umbrella of portal travel. And all of it simply has to do with how you are locking in the various Sankara states through your energy body or through your Kakrik system. 
Now you can get complicated and you can speak about permutations of da and d and all of that. But ultimately, as has been explained at the very beginning of these messages, you can also read the room, if you will. You can read the simple feelings and the subtleties of all the different ways in which you can experience this universal and unconditional love and its relation to all these other states, joy, freedom, etc. So, in other words, every moment of time that you are in, including this one right now, has a specific Sankara signature, a specific and very subtly different configuration of balance of all of these things. And to move yourself from one field of space to another field of space in the same time, in a different time, or in a different vibrational reality of that same time and space, simply requires you to place these ingredients around you in that exact specific sensation. And when I say place them around you, I really only merely mean to feel them. Now, imagine that you would like to travel, I don't know, to Hawaii. And for those that are listening to this in Hawaii, if you would like to travel yourself from the location you're in to the beach, then really, and I know this sounds ridiculously simple, but all you need to do is to allow yourself to feel how you love that beach, the joy it brings, the state of freedom it brings, what sort of freedom it is, how does that feel exactly, how subtle is that? And all of these other states, because these are specific configurations. We have always said, in order to portal travel, you must match the vibration and the frequencies of the place that you wish to go to. And this is how that works. You match those vibrations by placing yourself in the field of feelings that comes with being there. Wherever it is you want to go, whatever time it is you want to go to, whatever vibrational level it is you want to go to. And that works for the field of Lavat, for this holographic training reality. It works for planet Earth and other systems. It also works to transport yourself inside and out of this training ground. Because this is the simple system of movement known in Honomea. And nobody has put a limit on these Akariyas in the sense that when you're in here, you cannot also experience other expressions. Nobody has put that limit on it ever. The only limit that is placed on that is through your acceptance of the mind through your acceptance of Savok. But many of the students that are higher up in these Ekariyas, in these holographic training grounds, are continuing, of course, with them while being aware of not only other Ekariyas, but also continue their expressions and experiences outside of here. So, Why is it then that when you dream about being in Hawaii or you dream about seeing a loved one again that has passed or is some, on some other continent or you dream about manifesting something in your life that isn't coming, why is that then? Well, this 
has to do with what I said earlier. Is what you are feeling real? And is the abandonment of Savok in place? Because yes, of course, you can place these ingredients around you. You can try to activate the type of love that you would feel for that beach, the type of joy that you would feel. And you can create all of this in perfect balance and in perfect sequence, and yet nothing will happen. Why is that? It is simply because you are holding on to the space that you are in. Full abandonment means full abandonment. It means that you must completely place yourself outside of the setting you are leaving from and in the setting that you are going to. And that means abandonment of any association. And when I say association, I mean Savok-based association of that place. Well, think about it. Think about what you have recently been taught about the moment. You have recently been reminded of the fact that the moment is eternal. And that everything that has happened inside of time and space, so far, if you will, and anything that could possibly happen from the perspective of Sankara, is the same moment, is one moment. And it was said to you that in that moment things rise and things fall and that these are the generations of the ingredients. But to Savok, Savok considers the moment very briefly in more ways than one. It reduced it to time pockets of seconds and the more refined your science can count these seconds into smaller and smaller bits down to the micro and smaller the idea of Savok of what a moment is becomes smaller and for those of you aware of the circle of awareness pardon the pun where you have the past of the self and the past of the other and the future of the self and the future of the other and the eternal now at the center there you see how Savok organizes the moment with past and future in place but from the perspective of Sankara that circle the center of that circle widens and everything is the eternal now moment. Going back to my previous class, The Art of Portal Travel, I took you through an exercise then, and others have before as well, where we invoked the Honu, the sea turtle or the dolphin or the whale and recently the canine and the cat and if you go further into the third chakra the flying birds and those sorts of things and as I try to take you through this exercise last time I said place the dog there place this there place that there and of course with the knowledge that you have today you are beginning to understand now that I am not talking about placing the energy of a dog there or of a whale there or wherever in that exercise we we took you through at the time but what we were trying to say to you is the unconditional states that these beings can bring to you can remind you of 
because that's a good example that's where you should go if you want to understand the type of love and joy and freedom etc that we are talking about you see it most closely in your animal kingdom how you can interact with these beings and and how they feel to you and how you feel to them with a purity a directness that bypasses the mind that bypasses the ego and that often reduces your personality to shreds because it forces you interaction with these types of being forces you into the eternal now forces you into that space that i'm telling you is required to portal travel the abandonment that is required is visible there So, the practice, if you will, is this. I want you to start considering how you are truly feeling. If you feel emotional states, you feel mental states, you feel physical pain, you feel all of these things then use your pure will to bypass that script and that free will and to look what is behind it and to look far enough until you get to the permanent states anger for instance to be simple about it for a second is usually or is often the result of fear or of pain grief anguish and that is often the result of the appearance of a lack of love or care or those sorts of things and then apparent separation but ultimately, you can accept that script and play that out. Or you can go for the pure will of Sankara and make yourself experience exactly what state your love field is in, your joy field is in, etc. And then to change their settings and move out of the finite creation that you have placed yourself in. That is the beginning of portal travel. Because for those that, that, that wish to actually see themselves disappear from one space and move into the next, you are going to have to let go of that Savok field. So the first thing to begin portaling yourself out of is that Savok field and the finite entanglement, the armor, the prison it puts you in. So in other words, be a light onto the world. Make it so that you are not responsible for allowing the Savok energy to parasite the people around you and the things around you by choosing the pure will and stepping out of it yourself. And when you are there, register the specific nature of the sun elements that you are feeling, the love, the joy, the freedom. Because it is those states and their subtle 
balance settings that with enough abandonment of the original Savok based location will allow you to transfer yourself to move in other words beyond the state as you can tell beloveds it is difficult to try and explain this to you because essentially it is so very simple but it requires you it requires you to explore you to experiment you to dare to venture and make mistakes nothing can go wrong the only thing that is ever of a negative weight is that which you create in Savok states. That's complicated. With these natural tools, the outcomes are always going to lead you to exactly what you require. So have no fear when you experiment with this. Finally, I can feel the, the many questions and, and mind fucks and the complications that, that some are experiencing while listening to these words. And I would advise to those to understand that this is exactly the Savok field I am talking about. And that the way out of it is to stop focusing on it and to simply start practicing. Wherever you are right now, It has been explained that as you focus on the love within your first chakra, that technically speaking, due to the holographic environment outside of time and space that the chakra really is, that love is everywhere, permeating everything in space, in time, up and down the vibrational ladder, everything. That is the first thing to focus on in this exercise because when you simply start by attempting to feel the difference in your state of love the slot the subtle difference in your interactions in the rooms you are in in the environments you are in the thoughts that are coming through your system each time a subtle difference in these fields then that is the thing to catalog. But it is not a type of cataloging that is mental. It is not as though this system is only going to work for you when you mentally have registered all the differences of all the different spaces and all the different environments and all the billions of different ways and more in which you can feel that subtleness of love. No. And then you will not have a massive manual that you have to quickly go through in order to say, oh yes, this is what I need to experience to go to that place or to experience that time. No. Again, this comes natural to you. So in other words, the biggest problem here is that you are going to have to trust yourselves. Trust yourselves that this is already what you are doing, flying by this system, if you will, 
and creating reality by this system and trust yourselves that the most natural thing about you is what you feel in the permanent states. In other words, when you begin daydreaming about someone and or you begin and you actually successfully manifest something, it is not because you, you know, added enough of love and a little dash of this and just enough. It's not an alchemical reaction like that. It is a natural one. It is about naturally embodying and allowing yourself to feel these states once again, but with abandonment. With releasing everything about the Savok world that you once thought important. And again, this is not going to lead, when you do so, to great isolation or to great carelessness. No, quite the opposite. It is going to lead to embrace. It is going to lead to compassion and great care. Because that is simply who you are. Beloved ones, I feel that the words of this particular session now best come to an end in the hopes that you will take the time to come to practice with what is being said here. Because the faster you will return to remembering and becoming comfortable with this type of expression and progression, the faster you will feel the disentangling of the Savok world and the Savok universe. And when that occurs, the more room there will be once again for you to feel these natural states and to realize, and I'm sorry to be so repetitive, but to realize that this is already what you are doing in order to manifest this moment and to sit here and listen or to be on your phone or reading this book that you might be holding in order to get to that expression you already created a balance of all of these states in order to express that reality so all it requires now is for you to do it consciously and once again doing that means placing your consciousness at that system and to accept only those states as reality generating and to release that which has been the complexity of a reality that was not moldable and that was not, to say the least, very friendly. Release the armor. Release the mental anguish Release the idea of finite time and finite space. Release the concepts of past and future and see everything 
as the eternal now and you will be firmly on your way next time i speak naturally we will take this further but until then i wish you great adventure on this path great recollection and above all reconnection it goes without saying that I Solaris am in love with you that I am in joy with you and that together we are freedom thank you to Barak for the lovely accompaniment and the translation of the song into music and much gratitude to you all for being the explorers and the venturers that you are with all that I am this is Solaris signing off and so it ish.